UN News. I'm Trish Takanaki, and tonight as our guest we have the UN News Editors from the United Nations Conference, which is currently being held in Edmonton. They, for the next three days, will be our eyes and ears from within the committee room. Our first guest is Jazz, who is covering the World Health Organization Committee. Welcome, Jazz. What is the WHO Committee going to be discussing? For this assembly, the WHO will be discussing the pending threat of tuberculosis and the black market organ trade. Do you expect international consensus on this topic? Initially, no. I, I predict a lot of debating, but hopefully there will be a consensus reached on both of the topics. Okay, do you think enforced quarantines are a possibility to combat TB? It's still a frightening possibility, but hopefully after the delegations are in and they've discussed it, it won't be on the table anymore. Okay, that should be an interesting discussion. We look forward from hearing more about that as the conference progresses. We are also reporting on the di you're also reporting on the DISEC committee. Yeah. This uh, for this assembly DISEC will be discussing the constant threat of landmines as well as cybersecurity. What do you think the uh, committee will accomplish? Um, well hopefully for the cybersecurity they just want to draft some definitions for what is cybersecurity and how uh, to find some parameters for the debate and then hopefully come to a resolution. Okay, well thank you, Jess. We look forward for more insight coming in the future. And with that, we now turn to our news editor, Peter, to discuss the Security Council. Welcome, Peter. Hi. In some, a lot of the uh, topics that the Security Council will be faced with mainly revolve around reform. More specifically, who gets a vote in the new council and if there will be any veto powers at all. So the major players will be the permanent members? Yeah, the permanent five members, as well as the group of four, which consists of Germany, Japan, Brazil, and India, and they're vying for seats on the council. Okay, so do you expect Sudan to be a divisive issue? Yeah, I think the, uh, the Sunni's issue will bring out traditional East and West uh, kind of blockades. As well, um, it's going to affect the whole region because most of the problems in Sudan spill over to other countries. Okay. So uh, you're also covering the Legal Affairs Committee, I understand. Yeah, and the Legal Affairs Committee, they're going to be discussing international waterways and the production of illicit narcotics. In regards to waterways, what do you expect the delegates to focus on? I think we're going to be focusing on regional disputes and how to divide water and the resources that come from these rivers. However, this is an international issue and it affects any country that shares an international waterway with other countries or countries. Okay, the narcotics trade has continued to thrive despite uh, international condemnation, particularly from the United States. What do you think the major issue will be this week? I think um, they're going to be looking for a stronger international enforcement of trafficking because we have seen the drug trafficking industry grow dramatically over the past few years. And in terms of Afghanistan? Yeah, Afghanistan is going to be a major issue as well as Central America and Latin America. Well, thanks, Peter. We look forward for more insight from you in the future. Thank you. Now, we're now joined by our own news editor, Jyoti, to discuss the Human Rights Council. Hello, Jyoti. Hi, Trisha. How do you expect the delegates to handle the issue of human rights in relation to torture? Well, we expect that the delegates will focus on the ethics of torture and the pragmatics of specific situations and nations such as Pakistan. And would you expect discussions of human rights abuses in Myanmar? Definitely, as well as the pressure put on China, given China's uh, human rights history, as well as the upcoming Olympics, it would be interesting to see if China steps up. It will be interesting, definitely. Uh, you're also reporting on the Social, Cultural, and Humanitarian Committee, are you not? Yes, the committee will be examining the collective responsibility for people displaced by conflicts and disasters, as well as female infanticide and feticide. Okay, well those are fairly complex and emotional subjects. What specific issues do you expect to be addressed? Well, they will be probably addressing what, whether or not the developed world should take action to assist internationally displaced people. And as for female infanticide and feticide, they'll be looking at eliminating the causes that lead to it. Okay, such as inequality? Yes, and also raising the status of women in nations such as India and China. Well, these are serious issues, and we hope we, ha we have you back soon to report on them. Thank you. Turning now to the Middle East peace process, we now welcome Mark. Um, what would you like to see the debate center around? Ideally, I would like to see the debate center around how Palestine and Israel can coexist peacefully. However, judging by the caliber that we saw last year, we'll probably focus more around narrower topics, like the Israeli wall. Okay, but that could be a stepping stone for more complex issues. You're absolutely right, Tricia. 
The delegation is fairly small. Who do you expect to play a major role in the issue? I expect to see colorful debate coming from Hamas and the Labour Party. However, Fatah and Kadima will also focus on certain topics like democracy and terrorism. And of course the U.S. would be interested in those discussions. You're absolutely right again. Uh, I expect probably Russia, USA, and the EU to play a mediating role. However, uh, if Russia tends to be a dick about things, they will maybe side with Palestine, and USA will probably side with uh, Israel. Fascinating. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. That brings us to the end of tonight's broadcast. I'm Krish Takanaki signing off, and hope you have a good evening.